Yeah, you got part the, five, no, you're here doing jokes. I get like, it, no, but man, I, don't hear I, it. I do get that, but they're human nonetheless. It's like, yeah. They're human, but at the same time, take a week off social. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? I hear it, but you know, I think... Yo guys, welcome back to the final whistle. Today we've got a discussion video for you, and it's one of one that's been bothering me for for a couple months now. And um, it's <laughs> you're laughing already. You might get mad. <laughs> Basically, my question is to the panel: Is social media and football documentaries ruining football and impacting the way players play and how they perform on the pitch? Now I'm going to give my take quickly on it, and I'm going to let you guys um, go on the floor. The way I'm seeing it is that. A lot of the time, I feel like social media is impacting the way players play on the pitch in terms of their their um, confidence, their decision making, and then the pressure getting to them. And one prime example I like to bring to the panel is 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 Rashford. Okay, and I think he's really struggling. The niggas are laughing. It's crazy. <laughs> I think with him, yeah, like I think he really really struggles with um, criticism, and he labels it as abuse. And with me, I'm, I've always been um, a person that gets onto him because of his performance is not being good enough on the pitch and people see it like I'm just having a gender against and I'm just mm. on to him and really and truly I want the best for him he's a, he's one of the best players at the club but he's not showing it and I can't defend him when players that I'm trying my best to hate on Saka is got for what, 30 plus goal involvements I can't talk I can't talk too much on it you know what I'm saying so what do you guys think is social media ruining players and ruining their confidence and how they play you know what I think all it is is that mate the, the game is the game at the end of the day because mm. like Obviously, I get social media, certain pressures or not. I can, like, for example, if if I'm like a winger, because you said Rashford, yeah. If I'm a winger and I keep seeing comps online of saying, you know, oh, I can't beat my man. I can't take him lying. Da, 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 da. It might, you know, potentially make you think twice about what you're trying to do on a pitch. Mm. But at the same time, mate, like, ass. you're a professional footballer at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? Like, you got here because you know that not only, it's not just talent. You need to have a sense of arrogance as well. You need to have a sense of arrogance in the sense where you know that when you get on this pitch, you can do what you can do. You know that if you're a sick dribbler, look, 1v1, I'm taking him. Even if you, even if 1v1 isn't your greatest strength, it's like, look, if it's me and you on this pitch, I'm going to have the better of you. And you need to have that mentality. So I think it's kind of lazy to say social media is affecting the players in uh, that sort of way in terms of performances. Mm. When it comes to like abuse and like racism and all that sort of stuff, I can understand because social media is like a, it's like an amplifier. It makes yeah. it 10 times worse. But when it comes to someone like Rashford, who, you know, what was it in Ireland? It was Belfast. Belfast yeah. When the guy went out um, clubbing the night before the game. Mm, so. And then, no, no, but I'm saying like. <laughs> but when it was Sancho with the ear infection, he was back in. That's an ear infection, bro. Oh. That's what I'm going to say. Allegedly. It's an ear infection. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> okay, but, but what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that like players back in the day, and I'm talking about like 90s, early mm. 2000s, mm. say mid 2000s, probably when it cut off and whatnot. But players used to go on a bender. They used to go to the pub, go to whatever, come back wasted. Even in the morning, they'll be hungover in training. There's a lot of stories from, you know, a lot of football greats that they'd be hungover, they'd be drunk in training. Even someone like Eden Hazard, who they mm. say, you know, isn't, the might go, my, the guy might go out partying and the next day he's a bit whatever not in training. Too much, really. But yeah, huh? not too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not but too on much. Game day he turns up. Exactly, yeah, game day he turns yeah, up. So I think it's about is. having that mental fortitude to know that okay, you know what? When I'm on the pitch, I am on the pitch and yeah. I'm going to turn up regardless of all the noise outside. Yeah, mm. yeah I agree. I think they definitely got to block out the noise. Mm. But also the thing is with the sort of things that were happening in the past that we didn't know about. Mm. I think that's one thing that everyone always said that you know we wish we could sort of see what these nights that were like mm. we wish we could see in the mm. dressing room more yeah so now we're seeing it I, I actually like it i like the fact that there's that there's a bit more transparency mm -hmm. between the players and the fans but obviously it's you know it's what you said it's how you actually use it mm. and how mm. you still perform on the pitch the following day because if you're waking up middle middle of the night tweeting that enough is enough mm. <laughs> then what you're doing is you're actually you're buying into more, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving yeah. them fuel, yeah. Adding more fuel, fuel to, to the fire, the fire whatever the phrase is, I'm not going to lie. Bro, in the middle of the night, his head must have been crazy. <laughs> what? All you're doing is you're going <laughs> to... Man was strolling on Twitter, yeah, you know. Strolling on Twitter thinking, nah, this is crazy. Probably search his own name. Crazy. You know what it is? Let me, let me, let me just... Let some, me just go on. Let me, some, some ego boost yeah. or whatever. Let me just say something, yeah. So Rashford put out an interview on the 29th of February, right? We all remember that interview and he was like to the fans, like, he feels like this abuse, it spurs him on and that he's going to prove us wrong. Since that date, since the 29th of February till now, he's got one goal involvement. 
It's now involvement, it's, not like goal involved. He had oh. one goal against I, I, and when he one goal. One goal. Surely one he had goal. more noise wait, wait, against from, Tottenham as well, now. From Feb. From Feb, from 29th of Feb till so now. Hold, he's hold going to go to City the next day. We played did we play City after that? We played City before. Oh no, you might have played City after it was in March, isn't it? It yeah. was in it was in March that we played. Yeah, Liverpool. and he scored that banger. And he scored yeah, that yeah, so yeah, 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 two goal involvements. From there, but is that still, is that, does that make it it's really? It's not a lot. It's not, it's not, it's not good enough. It's not it's, great. At the end of the day, it's, it's, like, it's like Anthony Anthony three, now, it's not a lot. And then now he's saying that, that's true, that's true. Is, is, um, what's it called, it's enough. And the way I see it with Rashford, right, I feel like a lot of the time on social media, we are criticising Rashford because he's not performing on the pitch. Mm. But I think last year, what we saw with players like Harry Maguire, he was actually getting abuse, non-football related. And you see how he's turned it around this season. Mm. And on the performance on the pitch, he's actually like, playing how we thought he can play. Mm. And he's blocked out the noise and he's done it. And sometimes I feel like social media presence, it impacts the way people people play. I think so, and Harry Maguire is not really that player to be on socials and, mm. and giving it the big one. And I feel like Rashford maybe needs to just come off it and just put his head down and just play the game of football. But do you think like, as black players, they have that same, it has that same privilege? Because if you think about it, even Euros when they missed the penalties. Mm. Yeah. No one was speaking about their performance. They were just went straight to racism. Yeah, yeah. So it's I, like hard to criticize someone when I, I, you know there's the people, the racists there as well. So I hear what you mean. Hear it. I, I get what you mean, but I don't think it's solely race though, because if you look at the reason why we keep talking about Sancho, Saka yeah, yeah. and Rashford, and they're probably the ones who have quite a lot of the social media memes and it's coincidence mm -hmm. that they are the ones who missed the pens. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we talk about them is because they're the young lit players who are the main yeah. players for their club. Foden, if Foden doesn't turn up, Foden gets abuse. You know, we've seen memes of, I dare Foden to drop a stinker. <laughs> or Trent, he's a Trent mixed race, yeah, right? Yeah, I dare yeah. Trent to drop a stinker. So yeah. I don't think it's solely a race thing. I just think it's because they are, you know, the most popular players. Mm. Mason Mount, they're it's telling him, you better learn Chinese, buddy, and all these type of things. So, you know, everyone gets it. It's just, you know, it's just how you deal with it. I think Mason yeah. Mount, he's deleted Twitter. Mm. Yeah. Is that something Rashford needs to do? You know, it's just but, things that you need to consider. So what? Because they're footballers, they can't have social media. I think no, certain no, no. players handle it well. Saka yeah. handles it well. I mean, he gets exactly. abuse every week. Well, not abuse. He gets criticized no, no. every week. He gets abuse every week. When he's back, he gets abuse every week. When he's back, he gets abuse every week. Racism is, is that's abuse. abuse. That's abuse. Yeah. Yeah. It's abuse. But, bro. but, he does get criticised, he handles it well. Kai Havertz got um, criticised at the beginning of the season. Look yeah. at him now. True. And he's doing, you know that AI, did you see that AI thing? Yeah, 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 I like, bro, what? I, I'm not even going to ask him, but that's it. cold now. He's talking his stuff, you know what I mean? And yeah. he deserves to do yeah. that. So, listen, I, I want to move it on a little bit in terms of um, how documentaries are now looking at how mm. we look at clubs. Because okay. we know a few years ago when the All and Off It came out for Tottenham initially and then we've got the City one. Yeah. Is the insights of the club, of clubs, making us hypercritical of the way clubs are run, um, their structure, their boards? Is there only one way to, to run a club in, in, in a sense? Because I feel like people saw that mm. and be like, this is the way we need to go or the, before the Man City one, this is the way we need to go and this is what we need to not do and mm. stuff like that. Mm. Our fans, is it a good thing that fans have now seen that and now are hypercritical of their clubs? Or how I do you see it? I don't necessarily think that, you know. I think what leads people to look at the Man City model isn't that documentary. Mm. It's more the amount of trophies that they've And the results. Yeah. Consistency. Yeah. When you look at that, then you now think, okay, what is it that this club are doing? Because any club could make a documentary. You had the Tottenham documentary. Obviously, there's things that everyone would have been learning from each one. Yeah. But I think to people who actually work in the clubs, there would have been nothing new. Yeah, it's no, it's no new information. But new. I understand what you're saying from the aspect of fans. It probably does make us a tad bit hypercritical. But I feel like in this day and age, it's definitely a good thing, you know, mm. knowing and seeing a lot more about mm. your club. Documentaries, even a lot more of the so of the YouTube series that clubs do nowadays, yeah. it helps you be personal. But if I look at it from a Chelsea, Chelsea perspective, you know, at the moment, at the club, let's be honest, there's not a lot to be happy about. Mm. You guys um, haven't got one, isn't it? Like a uh, not, not yet, or, not yet. You should get one, though. But when? Well, we but have I think a YouTube, have a YouTube channel, but we don't. No, have no, a no, YouTube channel. Channel. no, no, like a little, <laughs> no, like a little. YouTube. <laughs> 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 oh, YouTube's the only good thing, right? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to make the point. Like you know, you don't. There might be a bit of doom and gloom around our club at the moment. But when you look at Noni Carney, you know, Gallagher talk about what it means to him to be captain and how he's been through the club. You get to see those insights as a fan. I think those things. Are invaluable. The, no, the, 
I'm going to be honest, those things kind of piss me off sometimes. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't want to see you be smiling and we just got pumped. So. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you got pumped no. fun, no, you're here doing jokes. I like, get no, it, no, but no, I, don't I, I do get that, but they're human nonetheless. Is that yeah. They're yeah. human, but at the same time, take a week off social. <laughs> like, do you know yeah, what I mean? I hear it, but you know, I think it's even, uh, this might sound weird, but I think it's even better when it's not your team. That's, that you're watching. Yeah, that's great. So like, Richard said, I find it hilarious. <laughs> really? If you play for my club, I'll hate him. Oh, 100 percent I can't watch YouTube channels unless it's no, 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 not, not like YouTube channels, but more so like the docu series and like the documentaries. But and from stuff, an so like, insight, insightful mm. perspective. Yeah, because like even so, the Sunderland till I die. I think yeah. it's on yeah. three seasons now. That one I've loved watching, not because I'm a Sunderland fan or whatnot, mm. but it's just because Sunderland are a team that have always been like Premier League steady eddies, and then all of a sudden they had a great drop. And they mm. went even, even down mm. to League One as well. Yeah. And everyone's like, what the hell happened? So I feel like for teams that are like Sunderland, Portsmouth, Stoke, just, and also the other teams as well that are trying to make it out, even Wrexham, obviously I know it because of the ties of um, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, they Reynolds. have one, but I think for a lot of the smaller teams, it's, it's good to see because I remember one particular scene in the Sunderland one, Jack Roddell was freezing to get a... Um, Take a wage take, cut. Take a wage cut. And or that leave. Meant, yeah, yeah. And, and that meant they couldn't make any transfers in the January uh, window. Mm. And obviously that led to them not getting out of League One. Yeah. And it was like, okay, now you can actually kind of see the insides. It's not just like poor decisions and whatnot. There's mm. actual players that are kind of, you know, either holding it up or mm. certain things. And yeah, it just makes and it more interesting. If we look at it from a, even a little bit more holistic perspective, if you look at um, Bay Tees, SE Dons, yeah. Hashtag United, that is like, you know, social media for footballers where of course it's not on the large scale of Premier League football mm. but you get to see a lot more what's going on what's going on in grassroots how teams are trying to go up the football pyramid things yeah. like that I think all in all social media like documenting what you do is definitely a positive in, in my opinion I think sometimes it takes away like it breaks that full fall between the fans and, and mm. the players but I feel like again I feel like sometimes it is a bit negative because for example the, the things like Sunderland Till I Die and, and All or Nothing and stuff like that they're great watches but then it allows the like the media to buy into those narratives that are already set there. For example, mm -hmm. like remember when Oba had his whole thing with, with Arteta? Yeah, and yeah, it hasn't happened really for Arsenal, but us like seeing that and it's a real thing in, in football clubs allows media to buy into things like oh Rashford's unhappy or oh, there's a dressing room unrest mm -hmm. this so and so happened in the dressing room and stuff yeah. like that and then fans just believe in it because like, oh, the I saw it here exactly like Deli Ellis crew is done yeah yeah. Danny yeah. Rose looks like a dickhead after no, 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 no. <laughs> but he is one 100% well, no, but, can tell. no but I can tell I can 100% tell yeah, no, that was it good that was it good <laughs> what about Milan? Oh, yeah, that nah. Oh, I love it, man. They don't want you, bro. <laughs> Every time Jolly Ali has a bad game, they just play that clip with Jose Mourinho. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, I was saying Inter, Milan. Bro, I ended up at Watford, bro. And he, even then, when he was at Watford, he wasn't even playing. Oh, you <laughs> yes, bro. What about Milan? I love it, bro. So, oh, yeah, documentaries kind of have a bad effect on that player's legacy. Player's legacy, exactly. Yeah, but at the same time, it's it's. I think it's good because... I'm a big fan of, you know, the truth will always come to light. Mm. And in situations like Delhi Ali or situations like Obamian given, yeah. Yeah. I was I was under the impression I was like, what like did Arteta just cast him aside or whatnot? Mm. Not knowing that <laughs> in the same way that we found out he was in Barcelona, that's how Eddie and Arteta found out yeah. what the hell this guy's in Barcelona. <laughs> 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 Did you get that's it? Funny, so man. I hear it. And then there's times where the guy's been late to training. Mm, I mean, yeah. look, you guys, especially rival fans, would have been loving 2020, 2021 Arsenal Snapchat. Obamian coming okay. in looking at Bro, looking at Travis Scott. <laughs> you could address. Looking at Travis Lambert. Scott. Like, that yeah, Lambo's yeah. funny, man. She might have to just doing back all oh, Bro, do you know what I mean? Like, kind of corrupt the good boy Saka. Yeah, but then now, now think about us United fans. When you've got Pogba and Lingard dabbing and doing the, the moonwalk and shit yeah, in the dressing room, bro. Yeah. Every day on Snap. I hear it. But I've seen it. What you guys are winning, though? You guys are winning, though? When were we winning? No, when Lingard was doing that at the Emirates, you guys are loving it, though. Yeah, but when they're doing it in the dressing room and we've just lost. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever got that fake accent as well, though? Jesse, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I love it, man. Keep it, keep it somewhere else, man. But it's good to see, though, all in all. No, yeah, but yeah, but I wanted to say one thing. Imagine the Aubameyang thing. He went to Chelsea and then his career was just ended like that. But because mm. of the Arteta thing, it kind of made people think this guy's lazy, he's done, mm. he's washed. Like, but, imagine he didn't go to Marseille. That could have ended his career, the Arteta thing. You know? Yeah, but to be fair, I think that's, that's again, down to him. It's, mm. again, it's a thing where if... Uh, the documentary didn't come out, yeah. then we wouldn't have known. Uh, I think the Im the impression for fans of him mm. would have been slightly different. Mm. But at the end of the day, regardless of the documentary, he still ended his legacy with Arsenal fans because he went to Chelsea. 
Mm. And then he made, he, he made all these stupid comments about, oh, I'm finished business. Uh, I'm here to make so <laughs> Like, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's yeah. things like that. He that... lost that game after us. He lost, yeah, bro. Right? Face. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, man. he's a punk, bro. You know what, though? Uh, it's, a, it's a tangent, but he ain't done, though, is he? No, no I'm no, saying no, Marseille yeah, saved yeah. his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear it. Yeah. But, Imagine Chelsea was the last thing he did yeah, as yeah, on the yeah. football pitch and he went to play like Saudi. You'd have been... And just <laughs> been good. Like. Thing is, it could even probably change the perspective of someone like Robin Van Persie, who is hated among Arsenal fans. Yeah. If there was a documentary at the time that actually showed that the club didn't sit down with him to have a mm. contract and all that sort of stuff, then the hatred would be much less. There's now a, a Figo documentary that, you know, explains exactly what went on. Mm. And now it's like, I think... He's not seen as much of a Judas mm. uh, to Barcelona fans. Obviously, things like that Barcelona well, it's done, it's timeless, yeah. isn't it? Mm. But I think it kind of it brings that bit of closure, yeah. especially when it's like um, reminiscent doc documentaries like Figo and other players that yeah. they have. So. I like I like the documentaries yeah. personally. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes it's, it is good because you do see the the players' personalities. And to be fair, I just feel like if it, if you're gonna do the whole personality and social media thing, maybe they should push it all the way to the left in the way how like NBA does it and you can literally see all the... No, nah, that's too much. No, I want... If, if it's going to be a, that thing, let... Because it, seem, it seems like they're robots and then they come out of character when it gets too much on social yeah. media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hear I'd rather it. Than just be the whole way Are we through. ready for like a West Brick thing? Bro, I... Because I, I don't want to talk it, to Nicholas it. Jackson, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know... Him and Nunes are about to get it. I don't, Bro, I don't want if, that, man. If, if it reaches those levels, your boy Rashford is in trouble. Yeah, because yeah. he would never be able he's to gonna, get He's probably going to end up in Traps once more. Yeah, it's long. Honestly. It is long. Yeah, because the NBA is ruthless, man. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's crazy. The memes when you... Yeah, <laughs> no, it's crazy, man. Anyways, guys, let us know whether or not you believe that social media is affecting the way players play and um, impacts, for example, their decisions on the pitch, whether it be their, you know, goal involvements, their, their beating the man or whatever it may be. Let us know in the comments if you agree with me or if you agree with the other side of the panel and saying that it's a, it's a good thing that we have it. And also, is documentaries a good thing in football or should they maybe lay back on it and stop from us seeing the real ins and outs of a club. Let us know in the comments. And um, before you leave, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And Raf, what you got to say? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Peace.